Hey, so welcome back, and this is another daily code problem. So today we're gonna to change it up a bit, and we're gonna do a, a SQL problem, and it's called Human Traffic of Stadium, and it's a hard level SQL problem here. And so what you're given is just one table called Stadium, and there's just three columns here with the ID, the visit date, so kind of the date of that um, date that they're visiting the stadium, and then the number of people that are attending. Okay, and so this is kind of a sample table that we can look at here. So we have those ordered IDs along with the visit dates and they're all kind of similarly in an ordered fashion. And then the number of people vary quite drastically. Like this one has 1400 people while this only has 10 people attending. And so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna return all of the rows here with the same columns and in the same kind of ordered by the ID date where the rows have at least three or more rows that are consecutive of it that have greater than or equal to 100 people each. And so the rows that are outputted for this example are the bottom like four rows here. And that's because, well, if you look at five here, it has greater than or equal to 100 as well as the two rows below it. And so that checks off this row, five, so we output it. And then we look at six, well, same thing here. Well, we can see that, okay, it has greater than or equal to 100, as well as the two rows below it. And so that also checks off the next row here. And so these two rows are good. The reason we wanna include seven and eight is you don't wanna just look at the rows below it, but also the rows that are above or below it. And so for seven, you say, okay, well, this one's greater than or equal to 100, this one's greater than or equal to 100, but also the one above it, and so that checks it off. And then finally for eight, because it works, and then these other two previous of it meet the conditions, then that also um, works. So to do this, um, typically for these type of questions where you really wanna know what the values are for the rows above or below it, is you wanna use Windows functions with the lag or lead options. And so you just define a CTE like so, and, oh, I named that wrong, there. And so we just want to select the current columns that we're dealing with. So the ID column, the visit date column, as well as the people column. Same uh, columns that were given from this stadium table. But we also want to include four extra columns, and that's to maintain what the number of people attending the stadium for the dates prior to it and the dates um, following the current date. And so to do that, what you're gonna do is if we want the date previous of the current row, we just say, okay, let's lag this function for this people column, because that's the, we wanna keep track of the number of people previous to this date just by one row, so the row above us. And we're ordering by the, let's see here, um, the ID column. So let's do this over. So this is our kind of windows here. And we're ordering by the ID column. Great, and so let's just name this uh, previous one. So this is like the previous day of the current day. Okay, and so now we're gonna do the exact same thing, but let's lag it. So we're getting the row um, two rows above, um, and we just call it previous two. And then we're basically doing the exact same logic, but leading. So we're gonna get the rows below this current one and then two rows down. And so we're leading it by one, then two, and let's just call this next one and next two, representing the next um, day and the next um, two days down. Okay, and so with that, we just simply want to select the same columns that we already have in that stadium table. And we just need to add a where clause. So this is coming from our CTE. And now this where clause is kind of the heart of the, not algorithm, but the query here. And so what that is, is so that we can actually have this consecutive order uh, that we want being respected. Where's that keyword here? Yeah, consecutive IDs. And so to do that, we just have to handle the three cases. And that's where, okay, if the current um, number of people for the current row is greater than 100, that's good. And then we can either check the two rows above it, which is one condition, 
we can either check the two rows below it, which is another case, or we could check one row above it and one row below it. Okay, if that doesn't make sense, writing it out in the code uh, might help here. And so just to show you that, let's just say where the first case is gonna be where the current number of people is greater than or equal to 100 and the current and the number of people for the previous day is greater than 100, which is uh, previous one. And then also the, the two days prior to this current one is also greater than or equal to 100. So and previous two is greater than or equal to 100. And that's one condition. Or we could have a case where, OK, why don't we check the next day and the next next day? And so we just pass in those respected columns here, next one and next two. And then finally, the last case is just, OK, if the previous day and the current or and the current day and the next day are all greater than or equal to 100, we also include it. So let's just make sure it ran. Looks good. Let's submit it. And success. So yeah, that's uh, today's uh, SQL problem. So I hope it helped and good luck with the rest of your queries. Thanks for watching.